by this point in your life, you're probably pretty used to counting in decimal. Counting on your 10 fingers, it's kind of the human language of numbers. Think about this though. Have you ever had to count something in dozens, like eggs or baked goods? How do you do that? Well, you keep track of how many sets of dozens you have, plus any extra that don't fit into an even dozen. So what if you had three dozen sets of eggs, plus four extra? How many eggs is that in total? Well, that's easy. Three dozen eggs times 12 eggs per dozen plus four eggs extra equals 40 eggs. Okay, so we figured out how many eggs total, but what if we wanted it in a way that made it very easy to see how many sets of 12 we had, how many dozen, just by looking at one number. For this to make more sense, I'm first going to present an example that will probably be more familiar to you. Take the egg example we were working with before. But instead of grouping eggs into groups of 12, you group them into groups of 10. This way, you can easily represent how many sets of eggs there are in a number that can be quickly read. Let's say we still have 40 eggs like before, but now divided into sets of 10 eggs rather than sets of 12. Without doing any arithmetic, how many sets of 10 eggs do we have? Well, 10's place represents 10 eggs each, right? So if we have a four in the 10's place, that's four sets of 10. The ones place then still shows the remaining eggs, which is zero. Now let's revisit grouping the eggs into dozens. Remember how we used the four in the 40 to tell us how many sets of 10 eggs there were, since the four represented the tens place. Now what happens if we decide to make the tens place into the twelves place? Rather than representing 10 eggs, this place in the number now represents 12 eggs. This means we can represent our number of eggs as 34 rather than 40. Three sets of 12 plus four extra. And from a glance, we can easily see how many dozens of eggs there are, simply by looking at the 12's place, which holds a three for three dozen. Also notice that we can still switch to representing the eggs in groups of 10, like we did before. See if you can figure that out for yourself. Since the three in 34 represents the 12's place, We'll multiply 3 by 12 to get 36, and then add the 4 in the 1's place to get a total of 40 eggs. One question you may ask is, why is the 1's place still the 1's place, even though the 10's place changes to the 12's place? I think the best way to explain that is to again go back to the base 10 or decimal representation of numbers you used to. Take the number 12345, or 12,345. This number has a ones place, a tens place, a hundreds place, a thousands place, and a ten thousands place. Notice how each of these numbers are powers of 10. Going up the line, we simply multiply by 10 each time, and going down, you can divide by 10. This means that we can represent them as powers of 10, with the first digit being 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, and so on. With our new number, 34, where the three is the twelves place and the four is the ones place, it's the same concept. The ones place is 12 to the zero, which is one, and the twelves place is 12 to the one. Again, if we wanted to extend this, we could do it either way by putting 12 to the nth power, where n is the digit. Two quick things to note are that when we're dealing with numbers other than decimal, binary, or hexadecimal, the latter two I'll cover in just a moment. We often write a little subscript denoting the base of the number so that it isn't ambiguous. You also may be wondering, how can we represent numbers in the ones place that are greater than nine, since there are only 10 different digits? In most cases, we just use the alphabet. So we count nine, then A, then B, for something like base 12, and we can extend this further for any larger bases. You may also see the Greek letters chi and epsilon used in base 12 in particular, although in most bases we just use letters. Now that you have an idea of what it means to change the base of a number, you should be able to understand binary relatively easily. Binary is base 2, meaning it includes only 1 or 0, on or off, which you can tell by the bi in its name. The reason for binary's prominence is computers. When computers were first emerging, scientists were theorizing methods of data representation using electricity. It turned out that binary was a great candidate because it was easy to represent even with fluctuating voltages. 
Computers represent their signals with a voltage, which is within some range, for example, 0 to 1. It turns out, for the voltages that computers operate at, it was unreliable to represent much bigger bases than binary, since you would need to be sure that the computer could output in the correct range of voltages for each value. Binary was also great because of its simplistic logic, which had been shown by the work of George Boole in the mid-1800s. Boole invented Boolean algebra, which had only two states, true or false. This is exactly like binary's two states of 1 or 0. I'll go into the logic of computers and binary in another video. But for now, just know that simplistic logic is a very useful consequence of utilizing binary. Okay, let's take a quick look at the binary counting system. We'll count with four digits, which in computing are known as bits. Right now, the value is 0 times 2 to the 0, plus 0 times 2 to the 1, plus 0 times 2 to the 2, plus 0 times 2 to the 3, which equals 0. Now we'll add 1, and we get 0, 0, 0, 1. Add 1 again, and you see we get 0, 0, 1, 0. Exactly like how we add in decimal, where when the value goes over the max value of 9, or in this case, the max value of 1, we add 1 to the place next to it. In this case, the value is now 0 times 2 to the 0, plus 1 times 2 to the 1, plus 0 times 2 to the 2, plus 0 times 2 to the 3, which equals 2. Which should make sense, right? Because we added 1 two times. There's one more major thing I want to cover, and that is hexadecimal, or hex. Hexadecimal is base 16, which you can tell from the name, hex, 6, and decimal, 10. It adds five new numerals to its counting system, A, B, C, D, E, and F. As you may have guessed, hex's usefulness also relates to computers, but more as an extension of binary. Since hex can represent 16 different values per place, and the number of different values for four bits of binary is two to the power of four, which equals 16 values, this means that each set of four bits can be represented by one digit in hex. Computers package their data in groups of 8 bits, which are called bytes. Since there are two sets of 4 bits in a byte, that means that we can represent one byte with a two-digit hex number. This is very useful for representing the value of a lot of bytes with much less space taken up. Low-level editors almost always display their data as two-digit hex numbers, like this file being edited, where each pair of digits is a hex number representing a single byte. I hope you now can understand just how useful alternate base systems can be. Although decimal counting is definitely going to stick around, using bases other than 10 can really be useful in some contexts. I also think understanding how to work with numbers in different bases like this helps you gain a deeper understanding of arithmetic and numbers as a whole. Thanks for watching.